Greetings and welcome back to our daily Timothy Time a ministry under the umbrella of Wooden Cross Bible Fellowship here in uh, Trondheim in Norway. My name is Carl Coates and it's a privilege, pleasure and an absolute joy to be with you once again with an open King James Bible in my hands looking at a really interesting theme or topic this week titled A mid View on the Alpha Course. This is part three. So um, yeah, if you've made it this far, I'm sure there's been some challenging things said. But just see the see this course out, see this uh, series out, and then come to uh, think about it, then come to a conclusion. So I ask, just suffer me through this uh, the short series, and then at the end of it, look at the scriptures, weigh it up, and then come to a decision. If you're new to this channel, I just want to welcome you and thank you for joining. Any uh, uh, returning viewers, always great to have you back. Both of you guys. Uh, uh, would you consider subscribing to the channel, pressing the bell, so you could be notified of the rest of the series and beyond? You would have noticed as you came into the uh, Our Daily Timothy Time today what the read is for today. If you are following the Our Daily Timothy Time reading plan, Second Timothy is where, is where we at, and what a beautiful verse in Second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen. Uh, study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So how are you gonna so how do you rightly divide the word of truth? Paul, our apostle who writes that, you go over to Ephesians chapter two and you see time past, but now and the ages to come, and so on and so forth. So enjoy the read out of uh, Second Timothy today, and then also Proverbs chapter 15 is uh, that second part of the two-tiered read today, enjoy that. Look at Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. That that one, uh, I know me in, in my personal life and in my ministry, this is a verse that, you know what, it, it's, um, it, uh, this is a verse you can think on for the next decade, every single day, and you can meditate on it, and, it, and, and you know what, it's still valid. It'll still be valid until the day you pop your clogs on, on, on this planet Earth. Uh, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but, a, but grievous words stir up anger. What a verse. Anyway, enjoy the chapter. It's a nice read. It's a quick read. 33 verses. You'll get through that easy. Right, let's uh, get into part three of um, a mid ax 9 view of the Alpha Course. Now, in last time we met, I had a look at the, at the sales pitch um, that the one particular church that I mentioned in way of transparency, the Norwegian Settlers Church in Marburg, KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa. And in their pitch, it's um, they said, uh, Alpha is a course where new believers or believers that have fundamental questions about their faith come together and discuss these questions with fellow believers and church leaders. We looked at that. Uh, I basically drew three points out of that. You've got the new believers, which are babes in Christ. Then you've got believers with fundamental questions, which falls under the same category as being a babe in Christ. Uh, and then we looked at the church leadership and, um, and, and, and the conclusion that I draw from that is church, church leadership. If you are having the alpha course at your church, the chances are that leadership, or if you are the leadership listening to me now, you, you currently don't uh, 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 distinguish things that differ in the scripture. Uh, there's there's no um, when I say thing, distinguish things that differ. The prophetic kingdom program is distinct from the mystery, and if you're not preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, you're in unbelief, and you're preaching another gospel and another Jesus, which is a major major problem in this dispensation of grace. So we spoke about that, and what I want to do today is. Um, I want to look at that, that, that first question. There's seven weeks, and each week in this course, there's going to be seven questions that, and, uh, 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 how that, that Alpha course is running. And the first three questions, I, I'll say this, they are not august questions. They're not. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're going into that Alpha course as a so-called new believer or a believer with fundamental questions, you should know that stuff in order to have been saved by Paul's my gospel. Now that I know is offensive to a lot of people, but I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to preach the word of God rightly divided. And, you know, sometimes uh, it's not easy when you've been told something new that stamps and puts a quietus on your religion and your doctrinal statement and everything you've learned at cemetery. 
seminary, uh, 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 seminary sorry. So it's, um, it's, it's not nice to hear uh, um, the message of grace for the first time. It's not. I remember I come out of the denominational systems. I was a Pentecostalist. And it, it wasn't nice hearing the message of grace first because there's a lot of stuff that you've got to put in its right place. You got, you know, it's one thing being scriptural, but if you're not dispensational, if you're not distinguishing things that differ, problems come in. Anyway, um, enough of that. So the first three questions of the seven weeks, again, I'm going to say they're not august questions. No, not, 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 not at all. But let's 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 take a moment and look at who is Jesus. Now, again, we, if you're a saved person and you're not a new believer, and you don't have fundamental questions, you would have you would have understood Paul's design, or God's design, that Paul wrote down for us, uh, uh, his design for our edification found in Romans to Philemon. And if you follow that design for your edification, you're going to end up a perfect saint, which is not sinless perfection, it's a mature saint, able to do the work of the ministry, able to be an ambassador, that can go into that can preach the word, get an individual saved, edify them to the point where they can go out and repeat the cycle. Okay, so who is Jesus? Let's have a quick look at this. Well, first of all, turn with me to a, a Hebrews. Sorry, Hebrews chapter ten. Remember, Hebrews is that first book of the Hebrew epistles written to that little flock about to go through Daniel's seventieth week. Is this written to us? As members of the church, the body of Christ? No, but it's written for our learning. This We need to know this stuff. But remember, doctrinally, this is not our, this is not ours. And Paul did not write Hebrews. Anyway, it comes through to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. It reads as follows. Then said I, lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Now, you want to take note of where that comes from. I mean, that's a quote out of the Old Testament. Have a look at that. Check that out. Anyway, so this book, this book, this volume is about the Lord Jesus Christ. So we'll start with that. And then here's another important thing. You know, to understand who is Jesus, rather than going to secular books, we're going to let, if this book is about Jesus, and if the, if the word is Jesus, and we'll look at that now. This, 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 this book is, this, these, this is Jesus Christ. When we're reading his words, he's reading us. So wouldn't it be a reasonable idea, as Romans chapter 4, verse 3 says, for what saith the scripture? Let's, let's let the Bible tell us who Jesus is. So I've got a number of points here that I've written down that I just want to, I want to bring up. Maybe you've heard them before, maybe you haven't. Um, and they are as follows. The question is, who is Jesus? Well, I, I submit to you, let, let's look at the broader name, the, the, the bigger name of Jesus. Okay, he is the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's just get that in our frame of reference. He's not just Jesus. He is Jesus. Paul twice in, in, in his epistles just calls G, the Lord Jesus Christ Jesus. But the, the rest of the time, it's either Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ, or the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's look at the Lord Jesus Christ, a passage that I'm going to take you to. Come with me to Acts, if you will. Acts chapter 2, verse 36, and it reads as follows. Therefore, what an important word. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know, assuredly, uh, that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. I, I submit to you a couple of three things here. Number one, Jesus is just his name. Now, Jesus is the, is the, is the same as Joshua and justice. So those three names are all, they're, they're one and the same. So you, you need to understand as he's more than just Jesus. Okay, then in that verse we read he's both Lord and Christ. Now, Lord is his title, capital L O R D, Lord, Adonai. Okay, that's his title. And then his position. Is he's the Lord's Christ? He's he's Christ, so he's the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. That's his title. Jesus is his name. And Christ, that's his position that he has. Okay, so you, that's interesting. I, I've always found that really really interesting. And then 
the, the, next, the next point I've written down to share with you would be the Lord Jesus Christ is the second personage of the Godhead. Now, out in theology, you hear of a, a, a terminology called the Trinity. Well, in Scripture, you don't read that. You read of the Godhead. And um, you want a good verse about the Godhead, who the three in the Godhead are, because there's three. One in essence, three in personality. Go to 1 John 5, 7. Now, if your Bible doesn't have that, you need to make sure you've got a Bible that does have that verse. And you go and check that out and read that. And then the third point, I'm see I'm running out of time. The third point I want to bring up about who is Jesus? Well, Jesus is the, the, the theanthropic man. You know, out in theology, they call it the hypostatic union. I, I, I've, you know, faith, the faithful men that I've listened to that have helped me mature as a saint, I've, I've heard uh, um, and, and got, got an understanding of the hypostatic union, and I would prefer, and I do teach, I don't teach that, I would rather say to you, he is the theanthropic man. He's 100% God and 100% man in one. Okay, and some verses to look at there. What you want to do, um, I'm just looking at the time. Time's out for me today. Look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. There's the issue of Christ being man. Romans chapter 1, verse 3. There's the issue of Christ being man again. And then you want to look at the, the sinless uh, 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 value of Christ. If I can say it like that. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. Read that. And then uh, you want to know about the, the, the God man, the God side of uh, um, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, read Luke chapter 1. Give that a read. And then Romans chapter 4. And then round that all up, tie it all up with... Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8. There's a bit of homework for you. It's been, uh, it's been wonderful just to run through a few short things about who is Jesus. If you do have any questions, leave them in the comment box down below. Please, let's have a look at it, and um, I'll get back to you ASAP. And also, don't forget, in the, in the description box down below, there's some really helpful links. Check them out. Marion Manley. Pastor Joel Hayes uh, uh, and Pastor Brian Ross. There's links to their books down below. Check it out. Keep your sword sharp, soldier. Until we meet next time, grace and peace, Maranatha.